Thank you very much. Um, it's my pleasure to um, welcome you all here this morning on my own behalf and on behalf of the uh, government, particularly I should say uh, those of you who have come from abroad. I want to welcome you to Dublin and welcome you to Ireland um, to this um, historic, as Pat has said, mansion house, round room uh, in the mansion house. And it looks a little different to what it looked 95 or 96 years ago um, when those events were taking place that Pat referred to. And you know, you can never, I suppose, come into this room without wondering what the founding fathers, if we can call them, would have thought of the challenges and the opportunities that we have the um, that we have the honor of being in a position to debate here today and uh, try to point the way to the future. Um, but I suppose to some extent, we're also, many people in this room are trailblazers also in this critical area of energy policy and the energy agenda. And uh, for that reason, I want to once again, uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, thank the IEA and the ESB for inviting me to be uh, here this morning to make some uh, relatively short contribution at the outset. Um, actually, to say to the IEA, in the first instance, that, uh, as many of you will know, as an organization, they are always absolutely at the cutting edge of debate and deliberation and analysis of a whole range of public policy issues that face this country and, indeed, um, the, uh, the European Union and the wider world. And the, the rigor that they always bring to the analysis that they uh, put together in researchers and reports and, indeed, debates I think that that's uh, borne out again by what uh, you've achieved in terms of um, putting together this uh, important uh, event this morning. So Brendan Halligan and Tom Arnold, I want to uh, thank you for that. Also the ESB, um, co-sponsors as aware of this uh, conference, this seminar today. ESB is an enormously successful um, company, organization of which we are rightly very proud. Um, I want to thank Pat O'Doherty, Alvina Graham, I think, is here, certainly is due to be here, the chair of the ESB. Um, good to have you here today and to see you participating, yes, as a utility and as an important uh, company, commercial organization in the public sector, but also being prepared to demonstrate a willingness to take part in the debate, to, um, to sponsor a debate like this, to recognize, as Pat did and touched on in his opening remarks, the change that's taking place, the rapid change that's taking place, and uh, to uh, facilitate that in a debate um, such as we're having uh, this morning. The title, Why Everything You Thought You Knew About Energy Is Wrong, is, I have to say, the cause of some trepidation to me as a minister seeking to finalize a white paper statement on our energy policy and on where our policy ought to go and what the, the, the directions of our policy needs to be. Um, but there is no harm, I mean, a lot of talk about disruption in the context of the energy uh, uh, sector uh, um, as a whole, but there's no harm in having some disruption in the way we debate these issues as well and understanding that we're in a period of enormous and rapid change and as somebody once said about another problem uh, when they were trying to write it up, um, I think, was it about the Irish? I'd probably get it wrong, so I won't hazard it, but, you know, every time you think you have an answer to the question, the Irish cha the cha they change the question or something like that. And it's, you know, you're, you often feel that when you're addressing and, and wrestling with uh, policy questions in this field, that, that questions actually change halfway through your attempt to reach an answer. But, uh, again, I think that's okay because that is, we have to acknowledge, and this conference this morning is part of acknowledging how rapidly these issues and how rapidly these challenges and opportunities are changing. And for me as a minister um, in this role for something over a year at this, at this time, that what strikes me as most uh, extraordinary is the rapidity of that change, even in a period of months, you know, even in a period of months, that particularly the potential that's there from uh, uh, the technological advances, the, the, the sheer uh, 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 speed and pace of change in technology, the opportunity that that affords to individuals, consumers, citizens, uh, producers, uh, generators, distributors, to change the way we do things. In fact, the necessity to change it. The necessity to change it. Um, I think that we can even go so far as to interrogate the notion of the consumer because I think we're not going to be, and we don't want our citizens just to be passive consumers of energy. The classic switching on and off of the light, and that's where their role finishes. That has got to change. And I think it's not just necessary 
as it were, rhetorically to say that, that it's important that citizens should be at the heart of the debate, because clearly that's so. But I think the, the, the changes that are taking place in the way business is done in the energy sector will mean that the, that the individual citizen can be, uh, the, as it were, the, can, can change and can be at the very centre of uh, um, the, cho make the, the choices that he or she needs to make, the control and management of the uh, consumption and use of energy. And that is a really, really exciting opportunity, not just for us as citizens of Ireland and of Europe, the world, but also for business. And those businesses, and I see many of them here represented this morning, that are out there ahead of that particular element of what's changing, I think they are the ones that will be the most successful. They are the ones that governments and others will want to talk to. They are the ones that the citizens will want to engage with and will want to actually uh, 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 purchase their uh, goods and services. So that's a big opportunity for business. It's a great opportunity, some, some discussion about this last night, for interaction here today between government policymakers, academics, um, experts, and business. And that interaction has to be at the heart of what we do. Um, and uh, I say that, you know, as a minister, as a member of this government, that we want to talk to you, we want to talk to business, we're good to see you here. We want to see you recognizing the investment opportunity that there is in Ireland, recognize the openness that we have here to innovation, in particular to innovation in this technological uh, uh, dimension of, of uh, energy production, uh, distribution and, and consumption. So it is a truly very, very exciting uh, opportunity, I think, uh, for, for all of us. And um, it's, I want to thank you as well for affording me the opportunity to be here. I want, again, particularly to welcome our distinguished guest, uh, Vice President Shevkovich, and to thank him for his inspirational address, really a, a tour de force uh, this morning, and for the commitment that he has demonstrated to delivering EU energy union. And it is a commitment, I state again, and I said to the Commissioner yesterday, and I know that Tisha Gantonge will have done as well, that commitment to energy union is one that Ireland emphatically shares. We emphatically share it, and we want to see it progressing. We, I, I want to say that I support the ambition that was clear from your address this morning and what you told me yesterday in terms of the timelines. They will be very exacting timelines, um, there's no question of that, but they, you're right to set those ambitious, uh, ambitious targets. We spoke yesterday about Ireland's uh, position and Ireland's, as it were, how we, how we fit into that picture, if I can put it that way, how we want to be part of the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the progress of energy union. And we also spoke about Ireland's particular position, geographically, which is manifest, but also our relative peripher peripherality in terms of, um, in terms of what, needs to, what we need to achieve here so that we can be full participants in energy union so that we can really fully participate in the opportunities that will arise and that manifestly are arising from, uh, from, from uh, the forward progress of energy union. And some of the detail that we discussed and you touched on again this morning, the complexities there in relation to market design, all of the questions that you have to bring forward in relation to governance and legislative measures and so on, we'll support you uh, in, in that. We'll want to uh, uh, join in that and help, and help uh, progress it. Um, I think, you know, the solidarity that's necessary in Europe has probably never been more evident um, than, it, than it has been in recent days and weeks for, for other reasons. Um, and I think we all appreciate how critical um, it is that we work together in Europe on an issue like this, uh, an incredibly important issue for all of our citizens, and you will have our support in that regard. The purpose of today's event, as you know, is to bring together national and international thinkers and doers, policymakers, uh, stakeholders, and industry uh, figures to discuss these quite dramatic changes that are underway in the energy sector. We have seen monumental events, including the shale gas uh, revolution in the United States, the gas crisis in Ukraine that was referred to, and huge reductions in global petroleum extraction investment following the collapse, uh, essentially collapse in oil prices. These have significantly altered the policy context in ways that could not have been predicted even a short few years ago. Less visible perhaps, but as I've said, potentially more far-reaching developments are underway with the convergence of energy and uh, ICT. And of course, all of these developments are accompanied by an urgent and accelerating drive for sustainability. 
These changes present major challenges, uh, obviously, but they also herald significant opportunities for citizens, consumers, and policymakers, and for utilities and businesses. Vice President Shevkovich graphically brought to life the emerging EU policy context of energy union, and it is, an, as I've said, a concept and an objective that Ireland fully supports. And I believe it will have a positive impact on by far the biggest single issue facing humanity today, which is global warming. The evidence of the impact of climate change is literally undeniable. And the response to this global crisis demands a generous display of international solidarity. Now, I hope and believe that this solidarity will be evident in abundance in Paris in December. There, at the conference of the parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP21, politicians and policymakers from around the globe will converge at what is a critical moment in the history of our planet. The importance of securing a global, legally binding agreement on climate change at this meeting, I think, cannot be overstated. Delegates must set the world on a more sustainable, low-carbon pathway, consistent with the goal of keeping average global temperature rise to below 2 degrees. As a member of the European Union, Ireland is fully committed to playing its part in reaching an agreement. And I believe that the EU uh, INDCs will be a key contribution to global uh, aggregate ambition. I fully believe that energy union, as it is implemented in the coming years, will drive the realization of these commitments, which will be made by EU member states in Paris. We reached political agreement on headline targets for 2030 at the October 2014 European Council. Europe committed to reducing its greenhouse gas emissions by 40%, to increase to 20% the proportion of energy derived from renewables, and to increase Europe's energy efficiency by 27%. Our vision in Ireland is equally clear and equally ambitious. We will transform Ireland's energy production and consumption patterns so that by 2050, our system is largely decarbonized. And our first target, as you know, is to meet 16% of our energy use from renewables by 2020. We are currently at something of the order of 8%, and this is steadily on the rise. And I am confident, as I said to the Commissioner yesterday, with effort and vigilance, that we will meet this commitment. Ireland's energy transition will not be painless and will not be without obstacles. But it is a transition that we have to make to safeguard our environment for future generations. From a policy perspective, the process of expediting that transition will be led by a new energy policy framework, which I will publish, as I've said, later this year. Informed by detailed consultation with an extremely wide range of stakeholders, the new framework will give direction, give certainty, and stability as we make the transition to a decarbonized future. Our efforts will depend on the availability of capital, of course, and other resources. Some of our decisions will involve cost, but will also involve and entail great benefits. So we will be presented with many difficult choices, but we have no choice but to meet these challenges for the sake of our children, our grandchildren, and indeed, this precious planet. Once the policy framework is in place, white paper, the real work begins. Or perhaps I should be more accurate, the real work will continue and intensify, because it is already underway. Many people in this room are already engaged in the transition. The energy policy framework will support and underpin those efforts. It will give new players and existing market participants the certainty and confidence they need to invest, to reduce costs, to improve energy security, and to innovate in the technologies that will reduce our carbon footprint. 
This in turn will promote national and regional economic development, which is of course of critical importance to all of our citizens. EY have reported that the energy sector contributed 5.4 billion euro to the all-island economy as recently as 2013. In 2014, the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland outlined how Irish green energy companies have been exporting into the US and the EU markets for years. The report also noted that as much as 1.5 billion euro is being invested in sustainable energy technologies and services in Ireland each year, supporting thousands of jobs. Government policy commitments are assisting expansion in the sector. For instance, almost 17 million euro was added to my department's multi-annual ocean energy development budget between 2013 and 2016, bringing the total cumulative funding to over 26 million euro. Our move to increasingly greener energy sources and products will create further business opportunities, I have no doubt, for Irish companies here and uh, exporting and many uh, more sustainable jobs as a consequence. I think we need to be equally innovative in the way that we engage with citizens and, and communities. The extensive consultation that I have conducted over the last year has taught me that the energy transition can only be successfully achieved if it has the support of all its stakeholders. Our transition will depend on human goodwill, effort and ingenuity. That requires citizens to become engaged in and inspired by the momentous and ambitious project of decarbonisation. They must be encouraged to take an active role in the energy transition, starting with people's own homes. We must also find ways of giving our citizens ongoing opportunities to input into policy development and implementation. Above all, we have to listen to our citizens more actively and to demonstrate by our actions that we understand their needs and have respect uh, for their concerns. In conclusion, Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you again for inviting me to speak and to participate in this important summit. It is, as I think we will all agree, a very timely and critically important initiative. I hope that it will help us broaden the debate about energy policy, which needs to move to the centre of public and political discourse if we are to achieve the power shift uh, referred to in the title of this event. All of us who are involved in energy policy know that it is difficult, if not impossible, to predict the future with any confidence. But we do know that we need to move quickly towards a decarbonized future with an energy policy that places care for our people and our planet at its heart. Thank you very much.